the issues that they had uh, and how our software could could uh, could help them. And just one stat I remember that that came back with the data was 60% of agencies uh, confess more than six mistakes per week, uh, over 300 mistakes a year, and an average of five to ten thousand dollars a mistake. Um, so it was it was great to have something that resonated as a message. But then when we backed it up with real data uh, in this poll, things like credit card failures and you know even simple things like putting an extra zero on a daily budget or whatever the case may be, um, it really resonated. So ultimately, that was the the, the richest and still is uh, the best way for our ads to to produce results. You're listening to the Rich Ad Poor Ad podcast, where we break down the financial principles that rich advertisers are deploying today to turn advertising into profit and get tons of traffic to their websites without killing their cash. These advertisers, agencies, affiliates, brands are responsible for managing over a billion dollars a year in ad spend. You'll hear about what's working for them today, their rich ads, and we'll roast their epic failures and crappy ads on the internet with poor ads. Let's get into it. Ooh, y'all buckle up. We're back in action with another episode of the Rich Ad Poor Ad Podcast. I've got your host, Dylan Carpenter, in the house. I hope everybody's having a great afternoon. But today, we have a very special guest. He's a tech entrepreneur. He's been doing this stuff for a long time. He's ran agencies. He's built software. He just sold an agency. He is the co-founder and CEO of Morpheo.ai. we got the one and only Eric Martin, man. How's it going? Hey, Dylan. Thanks for having me, man. Looking forward to it. Yeah, not a problem, man. So give everybody a little idea of kind of, you know, who you are, kind of what you're getting into to give everybody some context there. Yeah, so long time tech nerd mar- uh, marketing agency guy. Um, love the space, love marketing. Uh, been through a couple recessions now and getting into the to the world of, of automation with uh, a tool that we built uh, to actually run our agency. Uh, kept it as part of the acquisition, um, spun it out and, and having a, a ton of fun helping agency owners and marketers around the world just figure out how to fit, you know, have more time, be less stressful, not be as busy and, and get back to, to loving our business of, uh, of marketing. Yeah, most definitely. So, I mean, being in the agency life, you saw all those pain points and you're like, I got to find a solution for this for the most part. Yeah, I mean, we all sign up for this glamorous lifestyle of, uh, of, of you know, client dinners and, uh, you know, creative you know kegs of beer and gaming and then at, at you figure out there's actually a lot of work to be done um you know but we just yeah we spent time running around and kept being busier and busier and growing our top line and our bottom line didn't grow and you know we took more of a analytics approach to where the time was going in our business and, and you know figured out that it was a lot of mistakes a lot of issues around ad budgets and media spends going over and under and stopping and starting and i know we'll get into some of that but just wanted to put the fun back in uh, into marketing honestly and uh, it's such a great business and that really is what powers us today make marketers love their job be awesome and uh, keep them happy oh and that's a killer motto there I mean, yeah, everybody's getting an agency these days and realizing how stressful it actually is and how many moving parts, the front end, the back end, it's, yep. it's nuts. So, I mean, the fact that there are more you know, softwares coming out to just automate those processes and integrate in those systems is so much easier, it seems like. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the days of, I remember, uh, unfortunately, dating myself, but you, you started it by telling, telling everybody I've been here and doing this for a long time, even though I told you to say that. But I remember creating my first rollover in, uh, uh, in HTM uh, back a long, long time ago. And to, to see now that you can spit out a website that looks unbelievably beautiful and completely SEO rich within a matter of minutes with a, an AI piece of software is just you know mind-blowing. But it, it's a great testament to... Uh, the world of very subjective manual processes. We don't need to do it that way anymore, uh, but we need to actually be comfortable with, you know, changing the way we work. And I think we see that every day as the probably the biggest challenge for a lot of us that are control freaks and love uh, how we do it. Doesn't mean it's the right way, but we get stuck into our processes. So, oh, hundred percent. And I mean, congrats! You just sold the agency. I think you mentioned. Yeah, we uh, you know been been doing this for a little under ten years, and uh, met up with a group, and you know together uh, we ended up you know selling majority stake in our in our business, but being a part of this new uh, this new entity called Republics, uh, we're on a, a pretty serious growth plan. Uh, 
buying a bunch bunch of other agencies that have you know like minded vision and with all with different specialties, uh, you know, and together really offering a, an unbelievable uh, solution to to big uh, big ban- big brands out there. So yeah, it's been a ton of fun and going through the acquisition process. Been on the buying side before, but the sales side is very stressful. Um, super, super fast. And, and as we, you know, closed, uh, I think technically as the world was shutting down through, through COVID, it was a, an unbelievable experience, but we got it done and, and super happy. And, uh, our team has just been growing and the business has been, been, been growing as well. So really happy about that. When it comes to exiting, especially in the year of 2020, how long of a process is that? I imagine the amount of roadblocks probably doubled with everything else going on. Yeah, it, it all in all, it was about a, a year from from start to finish with transition, you know, and, and all those fun things. But hardcore was about six months of uh, of paperwork and, and days and nights and weekends with, you know, M&A advisors and terminology and, and deal flow and metrics and all this crazy stuff that, yeah, running into uh, COVID, you know, made it that much more difficult. But, you know, we had shared vision, like minded people. Uh, the deal went pretty much as we wanted it to go, but yeah, six six months was you know pretty stressful. So I'm 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 glad to 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 have that that wrapped up. Oh, I bet good way to finish the year, especially Q4 with how maddening <laughs> it is. You know? That's right, that's right. But you know, at the same time, for all of us on on the, the podcast, I mean, there's no better time for marketing proper to be in, in the lead in in any business. So you know, we now more than ever have been, you know catapulted to the front lines of figuring out a digital solutions and strategies for pretty much every business out there. So whether we're apps and agency or, or marketers, um, everybody's going to look at what we do and how we do it. Now that we've got, you know, even that much more data at our fingertips, you know, we're really in control of, of what we can do. And that, that's, that bodes well for the, for the future as we on the outside of this downturn. Oh, and so it's only going to evolve substantially. I can only imagine, you know, with everything coming out and whatnot. That's so. it. Yeah, that's it. Well, well, snap, let's get to the nitty gritty good stuff, man. All right. So as you know, Rich Ad, Poor Ad, we'd love to dive into what's working, what isn't working, and some cool financial principles. So to start off the road nicely, let's talk about this Rich Ad. When it comes to something that's worked really well for you, possibly this year, what is your Rich Ad? Yeah, I mean it's uh, it, it, it's funny because we're we're marketers and we love to to get into the creative and it, it's funny how you fall into sort of bad concepts. But uh, I think what's worked for us uh, all told is around uh, this protection angle. So we first came out with our software was, you know, we, we actually had uh, a similar uh, analogy to antivirus, where back in the day before you actually had antivirus in a, in a PC, it was something that you know was vulnerable all the time. And so we came out. Uh, this was, you know, pre-COVID, and we talked a lot about this analogy of antivirus in in marketing. It's like, what if you had something that was actually protect you? And so we started to use that analogy and, and built it into this, you know, uh, what we call marketing security software. Uh, lucky enough, we didn't actually use the term um, uh, antivirus, uh, and, you know. Otherwise, I think I don't know if we'd still be in business or not. <laughs> um, but what worked, worked worked really well, and what still resonates uh, with our audience is the fact that we all make mistakes, and we we knew that it was resonating. So we went out and we actually pulled 301 agencies, and we asked them what are, what are the mistakes that were working uh, for them in terms of the issues that they had, uh, and how our software could. Could uh, could help them, and just one stat I remember that that came back with the data was sixty percent of agencies uh, confess more than six mistakes per week, uh, over three hundred mistakes a year, and an average of five to ten thousand dollars a mistake. Um, so it was it was great to have something that resonated as a message, but then when we backed it up with real data um, in this poll, things like credit card failures, and you know even simple things like putting an extra zero on a daily budget or whatever the case may be. Um, it really resonated. So ultimately, that was the the, the richest and still is uh, the best way for our ads to to produce results. Now, when it comes to your audience and kind of asking these agencies questions, is that kind of how y'all make a lot of decisions to kind of more or less remain proactive, understand some of the newer struggles, the previous struggles to kind of optimize y'all's processes and services more or less? 
Yeah, I mean, you, you hit the nail on the head. It's it's one of those things where I don't think any business talks enough to their customers, and especially being in, in the marketing side, we always think we have you know the answers. So to to speak daily, which is what I do to agency owners and, and marketers of all sizes, um, asking them what's keeping them up at night is such a fantastic way to start conversations. So you know, scaling business with automation, retaining clients, uh, finding and hiring talent, winning business, keeping talent. Uh, implementing new technologies on and on and on. Um, it's ask a simple question. What keeps you up at night? And, and every day I hear something different, but generally it's around uh, those main, those main points. Man, I can, I can only tell you how many times I've added the extra zero accidentally, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Oh. That's right. And That's the worst good. part about it is in one other way to sort of interrupt you, Dylan, is that yeah, you're good. it's often uh, the agency owners that are out of pocket. So let's say it, it takes a few days or even a week, God forbid, usually for us, it was somebody who didn't come back two weeks later, you know, we were out $25,000, uh, a stupid thing. I'm sure that happens to all of us, but you think about how much you have to sell, think about your margin, maybe your 10, 15, 20, 30%, whatever, let's say 10%, how much do you have to sell, right? How long does it take to sell from a revenue perspective and your profit margin to make up for that? really expensive mistake. So yeah, it's cash out the door, but then you got to put a whole bunch of effort to actually bring it back in. So just a little, little uh, sidebar there. I know that was killer there. Oh my God. So with the agencies you see in y'all, y'all's kind of ecosystem, have they kind of thrived there in 2020 or have you seen a lot of the individuals I talked to, you know, in the digital marketing world, there's yep. this year is great. So I'm kind of curious on what you're seeing from your sample size of agencies, more or less. Yeah, I think a, a lot of the agencies that focused on project work uh, dried up very quickly in in March, April, and May. And if uh, you know if you didn't have enough cash in the bank or any reoccurring retainer work, and you solely lived on projects, you know everything just went to a halt. And so I think a lot of those smaller, maybe more niche uh, agencies or or brands, if you will, um, you know, or even even startups and apps it, it, it kind of caught a lot of us really, 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 really quickly and, and hard. Uh, but you're right. Some of the midsize and larger, uh, uh firms and, and boutiques, if you will, they, they, I think exploded and were able to move quickly. So offering very quick service, selling results, you know, of course is the easiest way to do it. Um, but the ones that moved quickly, picked up the phone, talked to their customers, focused on the retainer work, m- you know, made decisions quickly on people, unfortunately laying people off, uh, if, uh, you know, as need be quick decisions, I think a lot of those are, uh, businesses are not only, uh, surviving, but thriving through this. And, uh, back to my earlier comment, kind of reaping the rewards of inbound opportunities for businesses looking to figure out what their online strategy should be. Oh man, you're hitting it right on the head there. All right. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is freaking fire, man. All these agencies, they better listen up, there man. <laughs> oh my God. There's no, you can't see the gray hair, but it's, it's here. It's here. <laughs> years of experience yeah. there man yeah it's 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 been interesting because we have a lot of agencies who come on a lot of agencies who listen so to hear all these different you know pain points and you know some are struggling some are just thriving in this it just it's really interesting there yep. now a question i have for y'all and kind of y'all's processes is this, from Morpheo's perspective, how do y'all ultimately boost LTV for y'all's existing clients? Do you have a new service? Do you intro that to them? Do you kind of roll it in slowly? Do you have any discounts going in? I'm kind of curious on, you know, this world is so fast with software coming up. So I'd imagine y'all have always new services, you know, calling for those new needs. So I'm kind of curious how you introduce those. Yeah, it's a constant evolution uh, while mirroring up to our earlier chat on what it is that they need. So as their business is evolving, we're very close on product, where it needs to go, their pain points. And we release, you know, micro updates on a daily basis or weekly basis, but have um, sort of more, um, you know, fundamental updates within the platform every single month. Uh, we don't charge any additional cost for any of those features. Our business model, you know, we don't overcharge or try to take a piece of media spend. We don't limit users and seats. Um, back to our original principles of we started this because we couldn't find really intelligent, light enterprise or even enterprise tools that were cost effective for our small business. They just they wouldn't even talk to us. Um, so we wanted to make sure we lived up to, you know, to our founding principles of keeping it affordable, which means every time you have a new feature, don't go and try to, you know, grab, uh, grab a few extra dollars here and there. So that's what makes us sticky from a lifetime value perspective, perspective, excuse me, and I, what I think will, you know, make us uh, more relevant as we go along. Uh, 
Uh, we base our price point on of accounts. So uh, Google Analytics view slash website or web property. And that's where the threshold goes up. All the other restrictions you'll see on most software we, we don't have. So back to the feature side, we're always innovating. We've got a new budget tool that's coming out uh, next week. Uh, more flexibility, you know, uh, more opportunities to for start end dates, more flexibility across different integrations, uh, as well as anomalies to make sure you're not spending, uh, you know, improperly, et cetera, et cetera. That's all assumed that it'll, you know, not cost a, an extra dollar for our customers. And that came from, you know, speaking to them and some of the specific needs of what didn't work within the software. So to me, it just goes hand in hand. You got to make the software better. If you just sit on it, you don't update it, you don't listen to your customer, they're not going to stay around your LTV is going to hit the crapper. So we, we live up to it. It means a lot to us. And it's kind of where we get our focus. I bet y'all have some mean retention over there. Wait, this this model is beautiful, man. <laughs> yeah, it's been it's been good. Outside of the, the COVID hiccup, we've, uh, we've been able to retain the majority of our customers. And we're super, super happy about that. This episode is brought to you by Funnel Dash's ad card, the only charge card exclusively for your digital ad spend in partnership with MasterCard. And if you are an aggressive affiliate dealing with dozens of ad accounts, or you are in gray hat or black hat verticals, such as drop shipping, CBD, or other verticals where you're dealing with ad accounts getting shut down, business managers getting shut down, or even de-platform from platforms like Facebook and Google, then you absolutely need to check out Funnel Dash's ad card. We give you unlimited free virtual debit and credit cards. So you can have a dedicated card for every single ad account campaign. And you can attach any name and address in the US so you have complete anonymity on the card and at the card level. Plus, one of my favorite features is that you don't have to pre-fund or even top off like most typical virtual card solutions today. So if this is you and you're operating these verticals, whether you're an agency or an advertiser, then check out AdCard at FunnelDash.com. So while well, that's definitely on the up, yeah. let's go ahead and talk about the downs. There's so of course, we'd love to dive into those, you know, things that you may think are going to hit the jackpot that end up maybe crashing and burning a little bit, you know, open up the doors to where, you know, everybody's always, you know, posting great results and stuff, but you know, no one really seems behind, you know, sees behind the scenes. So what's your kind of pour at in this scenario? Yeah. I mean, what, again, you, you get stuck in some of the things that you believe work in, in years of experience. And, and one of the things I know we did early on was we, we fell into the organic world of, of posting, uh, and publishing content across our channels that we felt was going to really resonate. And, and it was good. It looked good, but it, it, you know, ultimately no leads, really no traffic. It gave us some awareness across social channels, but ultimately why it, it was frustrating is because we spent a lot of time and effort building up our organic content to the point where it didn't do anything. Uh, and it distracted us from, you know, our core focus of branded search and some of the other things that we neglected to, to start with. So, I think we got caught up in, you know, the ego side of wanting to look good in, in the market against our competitors when a lot of them didn't have a huge, you know, social channel strategy and or audience and following. And now, you know, hindsight, we're like, well, that probably makes sense. They probably went down the same road, tested it, tried it, didn't work um, and are moving to other channels. So that kind of became a, a good awareness for us to, to stick to what we know, um, you know, and get into the testing, pausing talking to customers, look at the conversion, you know, rinse and repeat. So that would be the big one for us. No specific on a creative or anything like that. It was really just fundamentally not really listening uh, to the strategies that we would have employed for, for most of our clients from the marketing side. So that, that's my example, Dylan. Man, that's an interesting one yeah. there without a doubt. So when it comes to the competitors, they're just pretty plain Jane on these kind of social platforms just because their audience more or less isn't on there, I guess, or. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's funny us, uh, you know, all of us as marketers, we probably spend, you know, most of our days and weeks probably looking for new solutions, testing, trialing, um, you know, outside of the, the time we don't have from meeting to meeting business to business decision or, you know, team to team or whatever the case may be. So, you know, we're, we're quite busy. And I think a lot of us don't, we don't really fall into the same traps of the remarketing and the clickbait and all those kinds of things. So it makes sense when you, when you, when you look at our audience of marketers and, and, uh, and strategists and business owners, 
you know, we're, they're going to be involved in, in other areas of making decisions. And they're probably not just scrolling around Instagram looking for AI software to help their marketing agency. It really doesn't, you know, make sense when you think about it. Um, so, yeah, I think, like I said, it falls into the ego side of, of what we thought would work. But looking at the data, absolutely did not. Oh, yeah, especially when you can allocate those resources elsewhere to where, you know, it's going to make right. a dent a little bit more soon or more, you know, opportunity cost in the long run. Yep, that's it. Damn. That's pretty interesting. I wouldn't have expected that. That's right. Yeah, because it's usually it's usually the very opposite. But I mean, hey, it's it's a specific niche, you know, so it kind of hits right on the head there. Huh. All righty. My gosh, quite a rich ad and a poor ad side of things. All right. So as you know, we love to kind of find the crossroads between the marketing and financial side of things. Take a page out of the Rich Dad Poor Dad book. <laughs> <laughs> so when it comes down to it, what's your kind of financial tip or principle you can kind of share with the audience based off your expertise there? Yeah, I mean, uh, I know we chatted about this earlier, Dylan. A couple things kind of, um, uh, as I look at experience, especially coming into it, and, and some of this is relevant for for newbies and, and, and old guys like me, but um, I, I kind of mentioned it briefly, but the idea that it's okay not to spend money and, and really understanding what your metrics are. So whether you've got an OKR plan or you've got strategic plans or goals or whatever you want to call it, really needing to understand what you want to achieve is, is one thing. And we won't go down the whole, you know, know your number stuff, but uh, we, we fall into these sort of monthly plans of, you know, test for 30 days, um, really have a window of, of spend across channels. Yeah, know, know what you expect from it, but it's okay to pause it and then really understand what it's doing to your business. For us, it's all about trials. You know, we have a freemium model, but get in there, give it a try, give it a try. Uh, what's resonating, which ad copy, why, when, what times, attributes of the, of the individual. Uh, you know, we go into even great lengths of looking at LinkedIn profiles and really trying to understand our audience segments, um, you know, and then spend a month on that and then go back and in, 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 in tweak the campaign, test again, different channels and sort of this, this month on month off, which isn't perfect for, for, for most marketing uh, uh, agencies, if you will, or, or businesses that are, you know, focused on consumers. But specifically for us, it was that sort of test uh, pause, listen, understand, look at the data, and then go on and on. And over time, that window narrows where you have less of a pause, uh, even though you're always looking at the information. So that sort of for us uh, is an interesting way that we look at it. On the business side, I mean, you know, we talked about cash flow is, is huge. Some of the things as I'm speaking to a lot of agency owners, of course, as hard as it is, really look at your AP and your AR and, and talk to vendors. So know your cash flow. But it's okay to pause going through this and, and look at your vendors and look who you owe money to and just say, listen, I'm going to need your help. Extend as, as much or as long as you possibly can. Generally, they're going to be willing to have that conversation because they just want to get paid too. And they'd rather not be in the dark with when, where, and how much or for you to just ghost them at some point in time. Um, so stretch out you know, your payables if you can. Talk to people about why. Uh, and as you're looking at even at your receivables, figure out ways to make it easier on your uh, your clients or vendors or partners to ensure that you also can manage your cash flow because it goes both ways and if everybody had that mindset we'd actually be much more transparent around the businesses that we're running and how much money flows you know in and out of us as you know as small businesses you know and then of course lastly make sure you're communi you, you know communicating to your team your your bosses your team members your employees um, about what's going on. I think more than ever, especially with a lot of us with, with younger workforces, it's okay to communicate it. Let them learn and understand what's going on. So it's not just about, you know, me or them or us. It's all about that we. Uh, so a couple of points there from, you know, going through this kind of recession downturn stuff before. Oh, yeah. Uh, transparency. I think you kind of touched on that or went around it on that kind of last topic. And I think that's huge. Yeah, now, the question I kind of have for you is you mentioned the freemium model they'll kind of offer currently. Yeah. Is that something y'all rolled with out of the gate or kind of tested to kind of see this is, you know, they got to try it out before they buy it more or less to kind of really kind of gauge that. I'm kind of curious how you were able to introduce that offer. Yeah, it's it's definitely been uh, uh, something we've tested before. When we first launched, um, you know, it was more of like a, a public beta, if you will. So we offered the tool up for free and it, it kind of you get what you pay for and there wasn't any expectation of, of, of cost. And so the accountability to use the, the system itself you know, didn't work that well. We had, a, you know, a, probably a handful of, of, of decent users that provided some feedback in exchange for, you know, access and all that kind of stuff. And then we moved to more of a, um, a call action on booking a demo. And we're very, very high touch 
uh, around our consumers because we had a higher price point when we started. So we really wanted to figure out and understand was it the price, was it the product? What, you know, we, we didn't know because we couldn't get them on the phone. They were going through the free trial or using the system. We couldn't get any information from them. So we switched up and did that. And we reverted back again to a, a, just a trial with a lower price point. That solved a few different things, but added other problems. And you know, we, now we've got like a middle ground. And so we introduced the, the freemium model with the restricted features, uh, unlimited users, but that way we can continue to build our own funnel, which why we've done that is because you're looking now at this you know, outset of, of COVID, et cetera. A lot of us are leaving where we were, starting new things, new consultancies, new agencies, Back to our business model, we want to provide software that is either cost effective or free. And as they grow, hopefully we can be sticky to them and be partners for, you know, for life. So that's why we've reintroduced it. Plus for us, it gives us more data, more opportunity to speak to, to individuals and businesses as they're growing. That's just as important as it is from a revenue perspective. And I think that balance is something we'll, you know, we'll continue to play around with. Man, that's super interesting there. It's cool to see the growth and the kind of how it evolves. Never stops. Now, yeah. Oh yeah. Now you were mentioning kind of payments with vendors. How, how do you kind of approach coming up to these vendors, you know, to kind of free up some more cash saying, Hey, can, you know, we do this 30 days out, 60 days out. How do you kind of come up with those deals to essentially, they know they're getting paid. They're not in the dark, but you know, you have a little bit more cash flow there because you're not taking that blunt force out of the gate there. Yeah. I mean, it, it's got to come from a place of honesty. And, and if you're doing it to truly make sure that you're in business, you know, their other option is to not do it and to demand payment and you may not be able to be in business and nobody gets paid and everybody loses. So, and sometimes, unfortunately, there are, are clients or vendors that just are stubborn and don't get it and won't play ball. And that's unfortunate. But I think in most often when I've had those conversations, it's if you come in proactively with an agreement, with a number, uh, with a plan, post dated checks or whatever the case may be is and, and sign it and show it and, and be truthful and honest. Most individuals that are financially driven understand that that is a smarter way to go. So, you know, there's no real answer for it, Dylan, as, as much as I'd like to say, but having that conversation and being truthful and honest, you know, everybody wins and, and hopefully they're, you know, on the same mindset. So. Yeah, and, and the reason I brought it up and wanted to get a little bit deeper is you don't hear about this very often. People think they have to bite a bullet immediately when there's there's so much negotiation out there to where, you know, people don't want to lose a customer. Of course, if they're you know the, the ego takes over, there are definitely certain cases there. But I mean, retention's everything. And if you can, you know, if somebody says we're not doing that, you just lost a customer versus hey, we can totally try and make this work. You know, you were realistic with me to where that would earn my trust. Like I'm going to be a lifelong customer because, you know, you've been able to understand what kind of time we're in. I'm struggling there. So I think that's a very big thing to kind of pull out of the pocket just to keep, keep there just in case, you know? Yeah. As expensive as it, it may be, if you don't have a fantastic financial advisor accountants in your corner, it's, you know, it's, it's the best place to invest when you can financially. Um, you know, beg, borrow, and steal their time as much as you can. But that, that's how I learned from, from a fantastic accountant. It's like, why don't you just go and ask them if you can pay them less over a longer period? I'm like, why the hell didn't I think of that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I think I heard that for the first time like this year. And I was like, why have I never thought I of know, this? Right? Yeah. <laughs> well, Eric, man, this has been awesome. Um, super value packed. So give the people what they want, you know, let everybody know how to get in touch with you, how we can support you and you know some new projects possibly in the works yeah we've got some uh some some pretty big features coming out like i said it's any marketer i think most of us are the same the, like i said before those issues of, of partly why we built this business you know credit cards failing pixels tracking goes down wrong targeting campaigns over under underspending ads disapproved like on and on and on all of this stuff is what makes us stressed out what makes our team busy it takes us away from you know what we love within the business whether it's creative or digital marketing or product or you know development whatever um i truly believe that you know machine learning and ai actually is going to help us have a, a better life and it being busy is not a great answer people ask hey how you doing oh, i'm busy you know how about being awesome and having more time and, and you know loving the world of marketing so i think it just comes with we need time to trust in these new technologies 
Um, I'd always say make sure that the, the businesses or, or apps you're trying or investing in are proven, you know, that you're giving your data to, uh, to a business that understands what it means from a responsibility perspective and how to use it. Um, that proof point is, is a big one. But if you're dealing with all those kind of common mistakes in your business, you know, we'd love uh, everybody to give us a try. So whether it's freemium or free trial, Dylan, I, I know we, we've spun up a, a beautiful landing page at morpheo.ai forward slash funnel dash, right, for everybody. So we'll you know allow everyone to save some money, get in, test it, you know, bug me on LinkedIn, uh, Eric Barden, v, with, v as in Victor, A-R-D-O-N. I'm happy to nerd out and chat with anybody about, you know, more financial stuff or anything else that's not working. So hook us up come on and uh, give us a try and we'd love it so dylan appreciate you letting me uh, do the old plug there so oh yeah and just to double up on it morpheo.ai forward slash funnel dash y'all check it out we're going to be looking at the traffic so if it's not good we're going to be really bummed (laughs) repeat (laughs) session here we go yeah (laughs) well eric man it's been a pleasure man thank you so much for jumping on thanks guys appreciate it dylan thanks again Thanks so much for listening to another episode of the Rich Ad Poor Ad Podcast. If you're like me and listen to podcasts on the go, go ahead and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, and richadpoorad.com slash podcast. And if you absolutely love the show, go ahead and leave a review and a comment, share with a friend. If you do, take a copy, screenshot of it, email me, zach at funnel-dash.com, show me you left a review, and I'll give you a free copy of the Rich Ad Poor Ad book. To learn more about the book, go to richadpoorad.com. To leave a review, go to richadpored.com slash review. Thanks again.